Liam, does Louisville's defense scheme wise, do they remind you of any defense you guys have faced this year? Um, you know, similar in a lot of ways, actually, to our own defense in some ways from a structural standpoint. They're based out of a three down front, um, what we call an Oki front, a uh, ton of movement, you know, just they, they rarely line up in a four down front and, um, you know, they like to hunker their safeties down into the box to stop the run. Typically always trying to get an extra hat in the box, whether you're in 11 personnel, they want seven in the box. If you're in 12, they want eight and sometimes nine. So it's definitely a challenge from a run game standpoint that, um, you're, you're typically going to have somebody free. And um, th there's not a ton you can do about that in terms of uh, when you do just hand the ball off, our running backs need to understand at times who the free hitter is and, um, and, and try to make that guy miss, run through him. We're going to have to get some dirty yards this week within the run game, but it does present maybe some opportunities to throw the, fo to throw the football. But they're playing their tails off. I mean, I, I think that they are playing fast. They're athletic at all positions, um, and, and I think they're playing with a ton of confidence right now. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Lee, I'm just wondering, in, in the time you've been here, have you been able to gather much about this rivalry and been able to pick up a, a feeling from the players and coaches about what this game's about? Uh, yeah, today. <laughs> today, for the most part, at practice. Um, and it wasn't anything like – negative or any, uh, anything like that towards, towards those guys. It was more just our level of practice in the way we practice today. The energy enthusiasm that we had today at practice was hands down the best we've had all year. Um, and, and maybe some of that also comes with being able to play about 50, so, you know, 50 or so snaps with our, with our first unit. Um, so those guys were probably a little bit more fresh today coming off of a game where, you know, going off Tennessee where we had 99 snaps and uh, guys were a little bit nicked up. And then Bandy, you know, we, we didn't do what we were supposed to do, so we had to play more snaps in the second half. But you just felt the energy, the juice. There was no negative, anything like that about Louisville or anything like those, you know, those comments or anything came up. You just felt the, the change. It, it reminded me similar to um, in 2018 when, we, when I was with the Rams and we finished the regular season – and we're going to play the Cowboys in the first playoff game of the year. Um, and you just felt the level of play, the level of focus, and the level of uh, practice just totally different. And that's when I realized, you know, playoff football is a lot different, and, and so is rivalry football. John Hale? Yeah, Liam, Will's personality seems to really lend itself to these kind of high-intensity rivalry-type atmospheres. How much do you have to be on him this week to walk that line between being who he is but not getting, like, overly amped up? Um, yes, definitely have to. I mean, I will say he, he probably had his best practice of the season today, hands down, not even close. The way he threw the football, it, it, just the, the level of execution, detail, um, I would have thought I would have seen probably a little bit more of a amped up guy, maybe miss some throws early today in practice. And that wasn't the case. I'm sure as we get closer and closer to game time, that's something that we may need to address specifically, maybe as an offense, as a team or whatever it may be, but specifically for Will, it will be extremely important that he continues to play the position as he has, you know, improving over the last few weeks and staying on that consistent trend of, of his footwork, playing the position, the accuracy that he showed on Saturday was, was extremely important for us to be successful on the game. And, and it'll be extreme. It'll be much needed on Saturday. Um, these corners do a nice job of playing with tight cushions. They like to jump routes and, um, you know, we need to be on the screws, but I think that'll be an important conversation as we move later in the week for sure. Josh Moore. Liam, the O-line. Uh, named semifinalists again for the Joe Moore Award. That's that's not new for them, but I know they've been asked to do a lot of different stuff this year uh, compared to the last few seasons. What what you know, just as that group uh, as a whole, how have you seen them grow, and what do you think they can bring to the table as far as you know creating an advantage this week? I know that they've been a pretty significant unit the last couple times in this series. 
Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's one of those things that um, we do ask a lot of them. We ask a ton out of our front, you know, front five and really all the guys that play up front from a schematic standpoint, conceptually, identification. There's a lot on their plates, but um, they take that with pride because I think of the the legacy that Coach Slarman and and Drake Jackson and Landon Young and all those guys started here. Um, They want that pressure. They want that the run game, the protections to be on their shoulders. They take extreme pride in it. And um, this will be a huge week for us to try to assert some physicality and and be the SEC football team that we're supposed to be. And we know who we are in terms of our physicality and trying to run the football and be physical um, at the point of attack and finish. That's going to be the hardest thing for us this week. Not hardest, but the biggest point of emphasis for us will be finishing and sustaining blocks, specifically with the amount of movement that they create up front. It's not going to be so much identifying as it will being able to work through some of that movement that they do and, um, and shut it down. We need to shut down some of their movement um, to create some more space inside for the running backs. But um, uh, they're, they're so easy to deal with. You know, I can jump them, you know, on game day, I can get after them, ask them a question, and they always have the answer in terms of they can communicate what they're seeing on the field. I can ask them what schemes are, are working and what they feel as though we may need to go to more so throughout the game. And um, there's things that they can see that I can't or we can't as coaches from the sidelines. So the dialogue and communication has been unbelievable with those guys. And it is absolutely a huge week for them to, to play that, to play their tails off. Nick Roush. To kind of piggyback off that Mark talked to yesterday about demanding more physicality from that group. How, how do you amplify, like, what are the challenges of doing that without just being a fake kind of raw raw guy? It's extremely difficult to do in practice. I will say, because you're, you're going against a scout team for the most part of the day. And, um, you know, our scout team works their tail off to do a great job, but, it's not even close to the same type of players you're going to play against on Saturday. And that's just the reality. And I'm sure that's kind of across the board, maybe around the country. So um, being able to, at that position, it's really one position that you kind of have to be able to turn it on on Saturday because you're not going to truly get the game reps on Monday through Friday from a physical standpoint. I believe helping, you know, not playing as many snaps as we did last week. That They definitely seem fresher today from a physical standpoint. And um, I, I just felt a different vibe from these guys today in terms of I mean, we had guys running into the end zone 60 yards down the field, blocking for running backs and wideouts. We hadn't really had that happen too, too often in practice. We don't ask them to do that. So you just felt the, the energy amplified and um, – I've just gotten a sense that these guys are going to be ready to play. Adam. Hey, Liam. Uh, Three weeks in a row, it seems like Will's played pretty well. First year being a starting quarterback, do you see it as kind of like the light light bulbs ticking? It's all starting to click for him? Or is it still, you know, day by day, just little by little, little by little? He's definitely improved over the last few weeks. And then I thought he had improved it. And and that's where it's hard to really go back to the Mississippi state as the, the outlier game. If you think about over the last, what, six weeks or five or six weeks, I mean, you go back to LSU, Georgia, we go on the bye, we lay an egg at Mississippi state, but he ain't the only one that laid an egg. And um, then you come back as an unbelievable performance against Tennessee does what he's supposed to do against Vandy and plays really well last week. So you do feel good about the trajectory, but he'll be the first one to tell you that um, he's not looking at that that way. He, he looks at it from a confidence standpoint, I think, but he definitely thinks does not believe he has all the answers. He does not believe that it's all set and everything's all good. He knows the improvement on a day-to-day basis needs to continue to happen for us to win this football game and to continue to win games beyond this. Um, but you've seen over the last few weeks, more so specifically in practice, 
um, the consistency, the consistency of what you're looking for. Um, and, and I do believe that he's, he's preparing himself to take his game to the next level. Liam, and he, these kind of games, turnovers are always such a, a big thing. That's obviously been a problem for you guys offensively. How much of that do you harp on this week, or is it like, hey, look, there's just one game left to go, just kind of lay it on the line? Yeah, there's not much we can say at this point about it. I mean, the pick was a, kind of a poor play call by me. I was being a little bit greedy on the interception that, uh, going in. I was trying to maybe put a little bit of a dagger in a little too early. And, um, you know, Chauncey could have maybe made a play on the ball to at least prevent the interception from happening. Um, and then Chris puts the ball on the ground, and, and the, the bot snap early in the game was kind of a little bit of a miscommunication fluke thing. So, um, some of those things are part of the game, but at this point in the season, there's not a ton more ball security drills we can do to harp this thing. Uh, our best players need to make plays and they need to take care of the football in order for win this game. We cannot give them any more possessions um, on that side of the ball. Okay, let's do last question with Jeff German. Yeah, Liam, on that Louisville defense, when you watch the film, is there kind of a guy that, that stands out as the one that, you know, makes things happen for them or you have to give special attention to? I think the uh, Abdullah kid, number 22, is a really good football player. Number nine, their starting linebacker is a really good player. They've got a couple transfers in the back end. They lost their corner, number 13, to a, to a knee, who I thought was a, a very good football player. I mean, one of the better corners that we might be have gone up against in the, in the, in the uh, over the course of the season. He's not playing right now, but they've got a freshman who's playing right now at the corner position who's a 5'10", 155-pound kid who plays his tail off. He does not play light like that. He plays strong. He's a talented kid, and, and it's actually been fun to watch him play. He's scrappy, does some really good things. There's their uh, back, their boundary safety number 27 is a physical kid. He's about 6'3", 225 pounds, plays hard. He's a box safety, does some really good things. And then I think the Sam linebacker, uh, Fago from, from Lexington here, has also done a really nice job for them. He's made some plays, done some good things. They're active up front. So there, there's a few guys up front and in their defense that, that have absolutely shined, but it looks like they're just playing collectively pretty fast. They run to the football. They play fast. They're not the biggest structurally in terms of who they are up front, but that's why you play an odd defense so you can get your, your smaller, you know, lighter guys, athletic, moving around all over the place to create some issues for us up front. And, and that's always the case anytime you play a 3-4 defense um, any offensive coordinator in the country would prefer to probably see a four down base defense uh, just because of the simplicity factor.